the crazy Israelis are back. Just saying this is our seventh consecutive year attending this conference and our sixth session providing a different kind of sessions to this already amazing and important conference. This session will not feature global experts with innovative projects and policies, but rather it will give a platform to hear from the people themselves. And it will also enable you to experience a bit what it feels like to be a person with disability in the work environment. Of course, if we would have been face to face, it would have been maybe a little bit more challenging, but we're doing our best to provide you experience even digitally. Now, for those of you who don't know us, I will introduce ourselves shortly. Access Israel is the leading organization in Israel promoting accessibility and inclusion for people with all types of disabilities in all areas of life. Uh, and we always say that accessibility is, our is not our goal, it is the means to an end. The end being true inclusion and improvement in the quality of life for all of us. We are true believers in learning from, other, from each other and sharing. Uh, and this has been developed throughout the years and that's why Zero Project is so uh, naturally our partner. Uh, they are the, the, the ones who inspired us to do these uh, amazing sharings. Now, through Zero Project, we are exposed to amazing speakers, policies, and projects who talk about the challenges, the solutions, the triumphs, and how we can share and learn from each other. Our experiential session offers an enhancement to the already amazing Zero Project content. We want to go beyond talking to create opportunities to experience and to get to know the people behind the disability. I don't know if everybody here knows, but uh, Israel is probably one of the only ones, on, only countries in the world where by law, every service provider has to go through experiential training to learn how to give accessible services um, at least once and annual training on accessible services which means every single year, which is pretty amazing. This helps to create inclusion for customers, but also for employees. Access Israel has been leading such trainings even before the legal requirement kicked in. And I'm happy to share our experience and our methodologies of combining knowledge, experience, getting to know the person behind the disability and providing tools to pay it forward. The guidelines for this session are very, very simple. Again, connect the Zoom, so not only you can see us, we can see you. Participate. I'm asking questions, I want to hear you. I don't want to, you know, remain uh, unanswered here. And this is not a session to be shy. You have to participate, really try the best, and there's no wrong answers in this session. So, during this one hour long session, we will look at the employment cycle from the eyes of people with disabilities, sharing what they experience. We will start from the application stage and end at hopefully a successful integration in the new job position. In each stage of the employment cycle, we will examine the challenges people with various disabilities encounter. You will have a chance to experience some of these challenges through our virtual simulators or by hearing the testimonials for people with disabilities. Now, um, I wanna jump right in and we will start with the first stage. You know, when an employer wants to hire a new employee, he puts out an ad. We need to understand that people with disabilities in many cases do not see such ads as addressed to them. They're used to, let's say, not being on the wish list of employers. We should mention that even before looking for a job, there's some kind of vicious cycle that I think we spoke about last year at Zero Project, where people with disabilities can't build up a good enough resume since their education is more challenging in, in many countries. It's not advanced as others. The work experience is scarce and even their skills because of lack of opportunity are insufficient in many cases. It doesn't mean they can't, if only given an opportunity. It means that at point zero, they statistically come with less to show for, and in many cases with less confidence to put them uh, themselves to answer such ads. A solution for this problem 
is to already consider these challenges when writing the ad and make reference that will show the potential employees with disabilities that they too can be in the workplace. For example, imagine an ad that will state that the job is located in a place that is accessible for wheelchair users. One less worry, a worry to have for those contemplating if they're good enough. We put out the ad and we receive resumes of potential employees. We need to remember that it's not by chance we call this the employment cycle. Just like physical accessibility, so is the accessibility of the employment cycle, a sequence. It's not enough that one stage or another will be accessible. We need the entire sequence to be accessible. For example, training the HR people to be accessible already in the recruitment stage. In one of the large tech companies, I won't uh, disclose the name, they wanted to recruit people with autism. They published an ad that stated that clearly and were inviting people with disabilities to send their CVs. The people in the recruitment uh, uh, offices looked at hundreds of CVs that were received and they usually scammed through them with a systematically top-down uh, uh, format. And if after viewing the work experience, they see that there is no match, they just move the resume into the reject pile. Now, in that case, they received hundreds of resumes that were relevant, but when the manager came to see if there's any matches, she was told that besides a few that maybe can be placed in delivery, cleaning, handyman positions, there were no really matches for the high-tech world. The manager asked to see a few rejects like that and took the effort to scroll all the way down. She found examples of people rejected since their work experience was limited to packing bags at the supermarket. But if recruitment would scroll down to the part talking about education, they would see that this uh, uh, applicant has a master's in computer science, for example, totally a match for this job. So again, accessibility of the ad, accessibility of the recruitment process. And let's say we pass through those two stages and I'm enough talking, I want to jump to the first uh, person that are, is going to share his experience. We are now in the stage of the interview. Now, it's important for us to remember that when you come to an interview, you are already nervous and you're already excited. And uh, with all that, you have to face the reaction of the people who you're coming to be interviewed in front of. And for that, I would like to invite Arnon Amit to tell us a little bit about himself. Arnon, please. Hi, thank you. How are everybody? <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself, Arnon. So uh, hello, my name is Arnon Amit. I'm a professional instructor with Access Israel. And when I was 20 years old, I was involved in a car accident that left me paralyzed from the chest down. Um, and it also affected my hands. My fingers and my hands don't work as well. And I've been living with this disability for 12 years now. I see. And uh, we're talking about an interview. What are the difficulties a person with disability might encounter while being interviewed or trying to be accepted to a job? Well, when employers are faced with criticism over a lack of employees with disabilities, many claim that their company does not discriminate, but that people with disabilities simply don't apply. It is important that employers honestly ask themselves why this happens. The challenge for people with disabilities start even when considering applying for a position. We start asking ourselves, at what point do we bring up the subject of our disability? On one hand, a person might worry that bringing it up too soon, might uh, too early, sorry, might uh, lower the chances to be considered equally and called for an interview. On the other hand, revealing their disability too late might create uncomfortable situations. For example, being called to an interview in a room that they cannot enter. And until we live in a fundamentally more inclusive society where people don't have to worry about disabilities denying them chances, I think employers are, that are truly willing to diversify their workforce uh, will should clearly state that the position is inclusive and that applicants should not be denied position 
based on disability and will be provided in an accessible workplace. I see. Now, Arnon, you, you are uh, uh, sitting in a wheelchair, but uh, uh, due to your injury, you also have a disability uh, in your hands. Can you elaborate a little bit about that and the challenges that you might encounter in a workplace like that? Well, yes, I have a cervical spinal cord injury and as such, uh, the fingers in my, mostly in my right hand don't work, which does give a lot of challenges uh, in writing uh, assignments, especially uh, when uh, writing by hand. Uh, but uh, I managed to go through that pretty well with, uh, with typing. And uh, for me, it's uh, the computer really helps with those kind of tasks. I see. Uh, when when Arnon and I spoke uh, towards uh, today's uh, uh, event, uh, I think that one of the things we spoke about was the looks, the way people look at you with, uh, you know, when you come and they really try to uh, uh, be over nice and over. Uh, so w w I want to I want to get to that uh, uh, soon. But before that, what is for you an accessible workplace when you're coming to an interview and you are asked about that? Right. Well, first of all, it's really important for me to get to all of the relevant areas in the workplace, not just the workspace areas, but also restrooms, break rooms. Um, and I do this in a dignified manner, meaning if the accessible entrance, uh, it cannot be the back door. I shouldn't have to go through a maze of elevators and ramps in the back rooms in order to join my colleagues on a coffee break and should be able to independently use the office and leisure equipment. And it's not always easy. Sorry, yeah. not always easy to notice the challenges an environment might bring to a person with a disability. We must remember that accessibility is a continuum. An employer might have an accessible parking and an entrance, a hallway free of barriers and a ramp by the staircase, but even one narrow doorway might mean that they can't enter the office. Furthermore, each disability is different and what might be a crucial issue for me might not matter at all for another individual with a disability. For this reason, it is very important to keep an ongoing, respectful, and open communication between the employer, an applicant, or employee about their needs and possible solutions. And this must be done together. Solutions that differentiate me from my peers or are done without consulting me, even if they are, own, if they are for my own benefit, will not create a real sense of inclusion and may instead only be costly, unnecessary, and belittling. For example, having someone bring me my coffee because I cannot reach the coffee machine is a bad solution. This highlights my disability, belittles me, and does not allow for independence. A better idea would be to consult me about what location and machinery might allow me to get my coffee on my own. Okay, um, now when we're talking interview and looking forward to how you want to be treated in the workplace, if, 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 uh, if you are asked about that, what would you what would uh, your answer to be? Well, I think first and foremost, it's very important to have a sense of respect in the workplace, uh, just in general. And for me, I want to be seen beyond my disability for my professional skills, my education and my value. It's surprisingly, surprisingly common for people to speak uh, for some to, to speak with people with disabilities differently than they would speak to an able bodied person, as you said before. Uh, common examples are talking to me as if I was a child or constantly referring to my existence in everyday life as brave or heroic. Both of these extremes leave me feeling that I'm only seen through a narrow prism of disability and not for my personal and professional value. People with disabilities are first and foremost people and we want to be seen and treated as such. And the bottom line is people with disabilities don't wish for preferential treatment. We just want an equal opportunity. We need a physically and interpersonally inclusive environment that allows us to be independent, values for our abilities, and equal. So it's not enough to have uh, an accessible table, an accessible uh, chair, equipment. The human factor here is uh, something that is very important. And I think yeah. that uh, one of the things that uh, Access Israel truly believes in uh, is uh, making sure, you know, the seeds of uh, inclusion are great but you cannot expect uh, flowers to grow out of them if you don't make sure the soil they are planted in is nourished enough and watered. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, training the managers, uh, training the, 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 the co-workers on, on what to expect and how to be more inclusive. I think 
what you mentioned here is the communication, which is very, very important. Uh, and I can tell you that many uh, um, employers have turned to Access Israel uh, many times and wanted uh, guidance on uh, uh, how to uh, explain to managers how to talk and what to ask during an interview. Can you share with us maybe something crazy that you heard or felt or experienced uh, um, that uh, was uh, asked uh, people with, this, with a wheelchair uh, during an interview? Well, yes, um, I've heard people talk about uh, questions about their hygiene, which seems uh, very out of place. Um, do you bathe? Do you, of course, we do bathe. We, we keep ourselves uh, very clean. Uh, I mean, at least I do. It's uh, obviously a personal thing. And um, I've had that people ask me if I sleep in my wheelchair and uh, and also very personal questions like, why are you in a wheelchair? Uh, which for me, part of my job is talking about my injury, but obviously a lot of people find these things very, uh, very personal. It's very hard for them to uh, to maybe share and, and they shouldn't have to really. I feel in these cases, the the most important thing is just to have some uh, some compassion and and think before you talk. Basically, I mean. Uh, totally uh, agree. Totally agree. Now, um, uh, I would like to invite our participants to our first experience. As Arnon said, uh, think of him coming to the interview. And Arnon, you had a great interview. I would like you to sign something, and I'm uh, uh, inviting you all to go into the chat. And right now in the chat, there is a link you should go into. Um, it has a small um, uh, employment agreement. Um, and what I want you to do is just sign it. Now, what I will do is uh, I will share the screen so those of us who are um, uh, connecting from remote will be able to see it. But I would like people who are participating on their own to um, um, try to sign it read the first sentence, sign it, and uh, write in the chat that you are able to do it. Now, of course, the cursor here is giving you a little bit of trouble. And when we uh, try to go uh, to the bottom part of the, uh, of the uh, form and sign our name, it is shaking and you don't really have a lot of control over it, uh, which is in many cases, Anon, I guess what you feel like. Well, for me personally, uh, I don't have much uh, shaking, but it's very similar. Uh, I uh, can't really use uh, my my good hand, and uh, really, uh, even my left hand doesn't have a great function in my fingers, uh, which makes it uh, harder to to uh, to to write, uh, obviously, in a clear fashion. Um, yes. Do I have any responses from people that tried, succeeded? How does it feel? Was it difficult? I would love to hear some responses, guys. This is what we were talking about. Not successful. Ricardo couldn't do it. Well, we can think, you know, we always talk about the human factor, turning them into a human ramp. Uh, so, Arnon, if I come to you and say, oh, oh, Arnon, give me, give me, I will sign it for you. Will that be the way to do it? Can I decide well, for you what is the best way to uh, go about it? Uh, well, no, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, communication is key in these things. Uh, I might uh, like, uh, like, I'm, 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 yeah, sorry, I'm guessing I'm not the issue. One person might like, uh, like to have some help and another person might uh, decide that they prefer to do, to do it on their own, even if it's uh, harder for them. Uh, so I think the best way is to say, would you like some help in this uh, task? And how can I help you? Yeah, exactly. And if, you, if he does ask for help, how can I help you? Perfect. And um, I think Talia Aviran here uh, added an, an important uh, uh, comment that there are ways to make it, if it was on a computer, and to make it accessible with, with uh, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the key uh, keynotes, uh, key, keypad. Yeah. Now, um, uh, thank you very much, Arnon. And, um, you know, once we are done with the interview, you're signed with the contract, let's go um, uh, to the first day of the work. And uh, as I mentioned it earlier, it's crucial to look at it as a cycle, holistic pers perspective. 
And it's very important that uh, employees understand that um, uh, it's not enough to have the physical environment. They have to make sure that all aspects uh, are uh, um, uh, adapted to the needs of the new employee with uh, disability, or else it won't really be a successful inclusion. And I would like to introduce us to another um, uh, disability that will be shared to us by our amazing instructor, uh, Tali. Uh, Tali is fully blind and she will share with us her experience. Tali, please. Hello, glad to be here with you. I hope you can hear me okay. We hear you great. Good. I'm Tali. I've been blind since age three because of retinoblastoma. I had uh, cancer on both retinas in, in both eyes and I lost my sight. Um, I've been an instructor with Access Israel for a little over five years and it's been very enjoyable. And my uh, everyday job is as a secretary to all the engineers in the county I live in at the Israeli Electric Company. And I started that job about four years ago. Although when I started, I was actually a customer service representative and I was sitting face to face with people and helping them with their power bill and questions and so on and so forth. So it was, it was a really good experience. And uh, what I would like to share with you is my experience for my first day of work, which, as you can imagine, is very nerve wracking. Uh, you know, it's exciting. It's a, a new place, it's new people, and you don't know what to expect. And when I think back to that day, I think that I had pretty much the most perfect experience I could ever hope for. I came to the office in the morning and the secretary of the then regional manager met me at the door and she was my companion for the rest of the day and when we met in the morning she actually said to me i'm here to make everything accessible for you this is this is the, these are the words she used she walked with me everywhere in the first day she showed me where everything was she introduced me to everyone we went over all the forms that i needed to sign and she read everything to me and help me sign everything. And I think she offered me about four or five cups of coffee during that day. Um, and another thing that happened that day that was very exciting to me and very new, uh, my boss who sat with me for the first time to, um, you know, to start talking about work and what I'm going to do, actually said to me, the only thing I care about is that you fulfill your potential. And it's a really important thing to hear, to understand that you're coming to a job, to a workplace where people care that you use your skills, you use your potential, you do your best and you perform your best. And it's a very wonderful feeling. It's not anything that I would take for granted. I agree. Uh, first of all, the electricity company in Israel is known uh, for amazing inclusive uh, employment uh, methodology. Um, but let's ask uh, from a different angle, because it's not your only job uh, in your resume. No. Did you have any experience that were not as good? Unfortunately, yes. Um, many years ago, about 10 or 11 years ago, um, I went to work for another company and I was doing work with them that had to do with computers and the internet. And the interview went quite well. And um, the first day I came to work, no one waited for me. I went into a building that I didn't know very well on my own, and um, it was quite difficult to make my way around. When you're visually impaired or blind, it is very hard to follow visual cues like signs or look at body language, look at where everyone is seated and try to understand where you need to go. You do have some auditory uh, signs that you can follow, but it is not very easy. So it took me a while to find someone to ask for help, and then it took me a while to realize where I needed to go and a, a little longer to realize where I was going to sit, where my station would be. Um, but it, with time and with persistent asking for help and explaining exactly what I needed, um, it became better and better. So okay. um, it was now, a, a combined effort. <laughs> great. Now, um, uh, many people uh, think when they hear the word blind, they think black. They think, see nothing. Yeah. But we know that um, uh, visually uh, disabilities, uh, uh, visual disabilities are something that are a very wide variety of, uh, of uh, 
uh, blindness. It's not just one uh, um, format of blindness. Uh, as we said, you you don't see black even. You you see nothing. Yeah, uh, which is very hard to explain you. and very hard to understand. Yes, uh, but it but, was it was important yeah. for us to yeah. show our participants here in the Zoom um, uh, how it feels or how it looks from the eyes of various blindness. And here, guys, you're ready with your hands? So let's start experiencing. In the chat, you have now a link. Um, and now, this link will start with a tunnel vision. Think about it. You're like uh, um, uh, Tali, you come to your first day of work. Uh, we, uh, after the greetings, we invite you, and I would like you to um, uh, scroll to the um, uh, middle of the page, and you will basically see uh, the open space that we're inviting you to uh, find your chair in uh, as a very black screen with, think of it like you're looking through a straw. Tunnel vision, this is it. You see what your ability is. The, the width of that uh, little straw differs from person to person, but you can see only what is in that little circle. Now, I can describe to you, because I'm trying to be very accessible. Uh, congratulations. Welcome to your new workplace. We really wanted you to feel welcome, so we already prepared a cup of coffee and put it on your desk. This is an open space with lots of tables. Please, go to your table. Let's see who the first one is that is going to find their cup of coffee and table in this new workplace. Louis, I see that uh, competitive uh, look on your face. Uh, let's see if you will be the first one. And again, I want you guys to really give it a try, uh, scrolling through the uh, various tables. We did make it a little hard because all the tables do look the same, but still there is only one for you with a table. And in order to uh, help uh, have the uh, uh, viewers that are not on Zoom uh, experience and see it, I will share my screen now and try to look for that cup of coffee. So I hope that's what you guys are seeing. We're looking through this whole um, uh, area. Anybody found it? Sharon, I can't see the chat. Did anybody find a cup? Yeah, we have a couple yes. of coffee uh, drinkers. Great, so right here, here is our coffee and we're very happy uh, to have you here in our new uh, workplace and we found a cup of coffee. Now, this is, as I said, just one type of uh, visual disability. And if we wanna see the big picture, I will show it to you in a partial color blindness uh, mode. Now, uh, note that uh, whoever saw it through the tunnel saw that the dividers between the table were orange. With color blind, partial color blind, you see it a little different. You see it yellowish here. But the idea is very uh, clear. You have here a very big open space. Let's see how it looks when uh, the uh, visually uh, vision disability is uh, uh, more as a glare. You basically uh, can see that it's very, very difficult to really focus and find the cup of coffee in front of you. Uh, and of course, each one of you, I'm doing it on the screen, but each one of you can uh, use and uh, try to see it uh, on, on their own uh, uh, link that they uh, uh, looked into. And this is blurred vision. And you know, it's very important because in, very, uh, in, in various places, and we spoke to many uh, employees or people who try to be employees um, uh, with visual uh, vision impairment, that um, um, if they don't use a cane, if they don't use a, a, a guide dog, and they come and they say they're blind, but hey, they're reading a paper, everybody thinks, oh, that's a scam, they're lying, it can't be. People with disability, with vision impairment can definitely um, uh, walk around without a cane, in some cases, without a guide dog. And remember that tunnel vision, they can even read a newspaper. It might not be as easy as it is for us, uh, but it is uh, indeed possible. Because it all falls under what we call legal blindness. Yes. And so we may use the term blindness, but we are actually talking about different shades and different varieties of vision. Perfect. So Tali, if I, if I had to sum up one tip that you have for your uh, new employee, what would it be? How would the integration be best? Employers should keep in mind that it's uh, very important to ask people how they can help them, if they need help and how 
they can help. Independence is not doing everything on our own. Independence is deciding what we want to do on our own, what, what we want to ask for help. Uh, it is our uh, it is the person with disabilities responsibility to explain what they need and how they can be helped. But it makes it easier if you establish an honest and open dialogue with the employee. And if you have concerns, if you have any fears or hesitations, ask, find an organization that can help you with information because information will give you a better feeling, a more comfortable feeling. And once you feel more comfortable around an employee with disability, it shows in everything and it makes a big, big difference. Perfect, thank you. I would like to invite, you know, it's not uh, by chance that uh, Access Israel likes our webinars to always be in this format with all the windows that I can see you guys. If anybody would like to share, up till now, his experience with a vision, with a vision. Did you ever see through the eyes of a blind person? If anybody would like to share, please unmute yourself. We'll be very happy to hear what you have to say. Or you can write in the chat, I'm told here, and you can take your time doing so. We will uh, um, move on. Now, um, <clears throat> After we uh, viewed uh, uh, through the eyes of the blind, and after we heard it from Arnon, who sits in a wheelchair, but other than that, he's amazing. Um, we will now continue to the next uh, uh, stage. It is very important to us. Up till now, we were talking about uh, disabilities that in many cases are visible. And you know, one of the questions that we always ask, um, uh, and I know that many people think it and never ask it, what is better? to see a disability, like Arnon in the wheelchair, or like Tali, or not to see a disability and come to that first day of work. I would love to hear it from uh, the participants. And uh, beware, because if you're not going to answer, I might pick on you. Louis, come on, what do you say? Unmute, unmute. Uh, I'm sorry, I was replying to a yeah, we're, we're doing simultaneous things. But um, uh, my question is, what is better, to see a disability or not to see a disability? And again, think about the first day of work. What do you think? Uh, what is better, to see a disability or not see it? Um, to be a person with a visible disability or not? Uh, uh, okay, well, but... There's no wrong answers. It's whatever you feel, what, what, what you spontaneously think. To have a visual disability or not? Is that your question? No, no, no. Is, uh, uh, Rodriguez uh, says that uh, I'm giving a trick question. You're smelling right. It is a tr trick question. The question <laughs> is, you are now with all the nervousness of the first day of work. Now, I'm telling you, you're coming with a disability. You can choose a disability that is seen like a wheelchair, a guide dog, or a disability that is not seen. And you know there are mental disability, maybe cognitive disability, yeah. hearing disability. What would you think would be better or more challenging? I would say a seen disability, but then again, um, I'm not, yeah, there are pros and cons for each, I think, yeah. Totally. Anybody else want to share their view? I see that in the chat, uh, Rod uh, Roderick, Roderick, who is Roderick? Yes, it's me. I would love to hear from you, a trick question, and what would be your answer? <laughs> um, well, that, that, is, that, that really depends. <laughs> so, um, uh, personally, I would, I would first go for seeing a disability uh, because that is the most obvious uh, first. Uh, but then I would also consider uh, uh, not seeing a disability uh, and then keep in mind that someone m might still have a disability. Uh, I'm someone who has a disability, but you can't see that. Mm -hmm. And for you, you say uh, um, uh, you would rather have a, a disability that is shown, that, that people see? No, no, no. It's, it's more like that, that, that somebody, somebody uh, uh, sees and acknowledges the disability. That's really yes. the most yes. important thing. 
Yes. So I can tell you that whenever we ask that question, um, uh, the many, many people uh, with disabilities that we uh, have in our activities, the answers are very uh, personal and vary from person to person. Some people would say, hey, I want to come to the workplace. I don't want anyone to see anything uh, on me. Give me a chance. L see me as a person, etc. Others will say, what are you talking about? Especially if my, my, my disability is not uh, visible, it's very difficult to start explaining time and time again. I need help. I, I, it, it's not uh, by chance. I'm not spoiled. I really need your help, et cetera, et cetera. And it is something that varies, and there's no one right or wrong uh, uh, answer for that. Um, now, I, I must tell you that uh, one of the examples that we saw from uh, one of the companies we consulted, there was um, uh, a company that uh, hired a person with autism. Now, um, uh, the person came, employee, first day, they explained to them what to do, and he did it. And the truth is, he did it very, very well. And it was potentially a great fit. After a week or so, the manager spoke to the manager of the team that this uh, uh, guy was part of and asked, so how is it going? And the manager said, listen, he's doing a great job, but I don't think the fit is right because, you know, we are all about togetherness. And, and, and when we go to lunches together, he's all the time preferring to stay in the office and sit on the side alone. Or when we're trying to uh, bring him to, to, to be with us, he prefers not to, although during work, he's great. Now, this company was about to fire this uh, uh, new employee because not for them, because they thought it's not good for him. And again, remember what Tali said about communication? It's not only for the blind employee, it's for everybody. Talk, communicate. Because after they spoke to that person, it turns out that he needed that lunch break. He needed that half hour to be alone to regroup with himself, not to be distracted with all the, the, the pressures and everything. And for him, it was a great fit. He was very happy at the job. And once we made this connection, made this communication, he continued working very successfully in that same organization. Now, um, I would like to um, um, uh, give you another example uh, of the uh, um, uh, a non visual. Uh, um, uh, non-visible uh, dis uh, um, disability, sorry. I want to do a document share of uh, the same employment agreement that we, uh, um, that we did on, uh, with Arnon that he signed. Um, how does it look from the eyes of somebody with a dyslexia? One second. Shelly, you're, you're sharing it? Here. So, if I want to be really mean now, um, I would love to have a volunteer from uh, the audience who will read just the first sentence or two. Now, of course, this is taking it to the extreme, but it is here to try to make you feel, try to make you understand how it looks for somebody who doesn't look like a person with disability. His disability is not visible, but still, this is what he's coping with. Do I have a volunteer from the group? Yes, Rodrigue, thank you. Employment contract? Yes. Uh, this document constitutes an employment agreement. Employment, the employee, employee agrees that he or she will faithfully and to the best of their, what? Ability, yes. <laughs> Ability. <laughs> okay. And you know, yeah. try to think. Try to think that I'm uh, standing on the side of you and saying, "Come on, Rodrigo, what, what, what's the problem? It's just one sentence. Read it, and uh, let's get on with it." You know, we're paying you by the hour. Yeah. Now this pressure and this, uh, you know, we always have a good job uh, in the chat. You're you're giving a thumbs up. Good job, uh, Rodrigo. Uh, Roderick, that's the name, Roderick. Roderick, yeah. great. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Shelley, you can unshare this, and we will continue with our next uh, uh, speaker. Now, when we are talking 
about um, people with uh, a disability that is not visible. I know that uh, one of the disabilities, at least in Israel, we have uh, been uh, um, seeing it uh, throughout the years, one of the disabilities that are not very uh, popular in uh, talking and in uh, sharing and in inviting for lectures are people with mental disability. But they are totally part of our workplace or should be part of our workplace. Um, uh, and I must open a parenthesis that I think that one of the things that we hear from employers um, uh, following the corona uh, virus and the quarantine and the working from home and being alone and being away, we have many employees that were not considered uh, with mental uh, uh, disabilities or, uh, before, but now are experienced those anxieties and, 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 and many other uh, uh, hardships. Now, this is something that needs to be on the table. And I am so proud and so happy to invite our next uh, uh, guest, Adi Giffen, who will share her experience. Now, Adi, we went through the interview. We went through the first day of work. You are now working here. It's not new anymore. Please share with us, first of all, about you and about your experience. Thank you, Michal. I'm very excited. And I'm, I apologize about my Hebrew. I hope everyone will understand me. So I was working one month in a new job and didn't told anyone and dealing with a complex post-traumatic disorder. Didn't tell anyone. Everyone on work loved me. I was a lovable person, always happy and fun. And um, one day it was a long week of hard and long depression. I woke up. I couldn't even get out of bed. Everyone there... Um, I couldn't barely speak. I couldn't send my kids to school. So uh, I watched up my boss and I told him, I'm not feeling good. He didn't understand what I mean and made me come. So I took a taxi because I couldn't drive. I, I, I go to work with my pajama, my neglected pajama. I, I didn't have the power to re replace to something else. And I just sat there and and cry, and my head was in the cloud. The, bo the boss was yelling at me. Everyone was speak very loud, and, and the work day didn't over. It was a nightmare. It's like I have, how I explain, it's like I have two person, uh, people, two people inside me. The first one is, is lovable and can be the nail of the party, and the other one is very sad and wants to be alone, very even lonely. So hi, my name is Adi Geffen. I'm 37 years old, divorced, and proud mom to three beautiful kids. My biggest dream is to be a famous lecturer in TED. Also, uh, also in these days, I'm writing my book uh, that deals with cute uh, or sad romantic stories. Um, and I'm dealing with three mental illness which don't define who I am as a person. Now, if I go back to my story, uh, things can be easier for me if only in the beginning of the interview, someone would ask me, are you dealing with, with any disabilities that we, uh, we as your workplace need to know? By asking that, um, in the very beginning of the interview, uh, the company uh, gives a, a fair chance to people like me to tell what they're dealing with so that everyone can help me and know how to, to help me and deal with me with the days I'm feeling good and can function and with the days I'm not feeling so good and even get, uh, couldn't get out of, uh, of bed. Um, okay, I, I, I want to ask you something. You know, people hear mental disability. Do you have voices in your head? You're hearing voices? Um, it's like, it, it's not, it's not, it's a beautiful question, Michal, thank you. It's not uh, an actual voice, like, hey, how are you? Like someone stand beside me, no. It's my inner voice that, that speaks to me, and he's not very nice. Sometimes he's nice, but sometimes he makes fun of me, um, speaks uh, not good words to me, and it's hard. Um, now, I would, uh, I would like to also ask you, I mentioned it a little bit, but uh, I want to hear it from you. How does COVID affect you and 
to your knowledge, other people with mental disabilities? Is it good, bad? What, what do you think? Um, uh, this time of uh, Corona time uh, gives another uh, perspective uh, on life. On life, some some uh, some men, uh, some mental uh, um, person, um, well, it's very very good for them because they uh, don't need to go out to work. Uh, to work, they can do everything from the computer. So if they de if they have uh, a day with with depression, they can, they can still work and and be a good em employee, for example. But for for me. I don't like the the corona at all. I I need people. I need to see smiles. So it makes me even more sad. And um, okay. it was very hard for me. Now, if I want to ask you for your one, two best tips uh, on how to make sure that your employment would be inclusive, what would you say? I would say my my biggest message is to keep an open heart and, and mind to that to, to the, everyone be able to fit. Um, just be a person. Uh, don't be a manager and an employee. Just be two person looking at each other, um, and, and a little bit sense of humor uh, would help. A smile, uh, you know, it makes yeah. everything uh, easier. The, yeah. the sensitivity is the is the key to everything. Perfect. Especially Thank for you. Us. Yeah, thank you so much, Adi. As always, um, I love hearing you. Um, uh, and, and you will stay here online because maybe some people will have uh, some questions. But um, uh, I would like to add another story from uh, the routine day-to-day -day work. We had one of our uh, companies, a big bank, that employed uh, a lady with hearing disabilities. Now, um, uh, again, it's not visible. And she came to work, and the truth is, she didn't want to share with anyone that she had such a disability. And um, uh, after a month, a uh, month or two, I don't remember the exact time, um, when we came and asked how the integration uh, uh, went, we heard the following. We heard, listen, sometimes she does amazing job, really, to the point, exactly what we want. But other times, she just ignores, as if she's doing it on purpose. Now, when we started checking this, it, we turned out that the manager of this employee with the hearing disability chews gum, you know, just chews gum almost all the time. Now, when she didn't chew gum, the employee was able to read her lips. But once she chewed gum, it was very, very difficult. And that employee did not want to come and say, you know, excuse me, I can't hear. She didn't want to disclose her disability. Think about it. And the, the, the mere lack of communication almost got that lady fired. Uh, after we intervened and we explained to the manager, we explained to the coworkers how to do, how to communicate. You know, I'm known as a person that likes to talk with their hands. You know, even that, if somebody is now reading my lips and I go like this, it's very, very difficult to do that. You will catch one word, but not catch four others. Mm -hmm. So the communication, understanding what you need is something we need to keep in mind. Now. Um, if we are jumping from routine day-to-day uh, -day work and hearing disability, I'm very happy to invite our next uh, speaker, um, uh, Dina, who is an amazing lady. She will introduce herself, and she happens to be also a blind, a deaf. And uh, we would love to hear from you, Dina, not only about the day-to-day, -day, you know, work-oriented uh, uh, things, but beyond work. What else do we need to know in the employment cycle? Please, Dina. So my name is Dina. I'm 34 years old. I have two sweet children, a boy who's two years old and a girl who's four years old. I was born deaf. And when I was five months old, my parents noticed that I don't react to noises. And they took me to the doctors when I was about six months old. And yeah, the doctor approved. I was deaf. And I got hearing aids, my first hearing aids. And my dad was shocked to find out, to find out that I'm deaf. How? What should I do? How did it happen? And he was really depressed. He was like that for about a month, really shocked until the neighbor caught him and told him, 
get yourself together. You have two sweet girls, me and my older sister who is hearing. They're both smart and they will be okay. Don't worry. And so he got back to himself. I discovered sign language only when I was about 10 years old because I went to a hearing environment. My parents are hearing, but when I found out about sign language, I was so moved by it and hypnotized. I could express myself freely and naturally. And I learned chemis chemistry in my first degree. I've worked in a drug company and we had four workers with me who had hearing loss in different levels all sorts of levels. And one deaf person who worked there brought me to work there too. And I brought my friend who is deaf also, and she brought another friend. And my direct manager was a hearing person who was really old, about 80 years old. And he immigrated from Uruguay, in, from Uruguay. And he had a really heavy accent and I couldn't understand him. And he couldn't understand me because I had a deaf and hard of hearing accent. So our communication was really off and I felt that he has no patience for me. And he gave me really simple tasks and simple jobs. And I felt- Thank you to Access Israel for this very um, interesting and exciting uh, session.